This is YSM Sports Media. I want to thank you for all your love and support. Really appreciate it. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and click the notification button for all future content. With a chief, old Burlton. What's good, yo? Not much. What's going on with you? Ah, man, I'm chilling, man. What you got on today? What I got on today? Yeah, what you got going on? Oh, I got, basically, we just, um, we already sharp. We sharpened it up. We did a lot of, uh, sparring early in camp. Mm -hmm. Ready. So right now, pretty much just tapering down weight more and more. That's all we really doing right now. We're just having fun, as much fun as we can while we're doing it. You got a date for the fight? Yeah, January 30th. January 30th? Yeah. So, um, you're fresh off the Olympic trials, about to have your professional debut. How you feel? I feel good. I'm ready to, like, get it going. Like, we spoke last time. I'm ready to show the world what's happening. For sure. Now, from what I'm hearing, you're foregoing four rounds and going straight into six? Yeah, I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm that type of monster. You know what I mean? The people that signed me, look to put me into that situation. They believe in me. That's why I take it there. Like, they believe in me to do it. And I believe in me, so let's get it. I'm right for it. Now, you signed uh, with uh, King's Promotion and Al Haney. Yeah. Why was that the right move at this time? It was the right move at, at this time because I'm looking at in terms of staying active and being moved the right way. You know, I'll, I'll move his guys pretty good. We got a lot of the uh, top fighters in the sport. So that's all, that's what I'm trying to get into. Now, uh, what way do you debut in? Um, 175, light heavyweight. Hey, yo, man, you look like a cruiserweight. Yo. Yeah, I mean... It's like that, you know what I mean? I'm growing now, so I'm growing into becoming a man, so I'm getting more muscle, taller and stuff, so I'm still not done growing yet. So I'm definitely look like the size of a cruiser, for sure. Now, who do you, you spar with? You spar with heavyweights, or you spar with like smaller guys around your weight? I spar with uh, heavyweights, and I spar with guys around my weight, too. So, they don't really matter. Is it easier to fight a small guy or a bigger guy? Fight whoever as long as I put my mind to it. You know, you just gotta look at what you got in front of you. All the guy can come with more speed, so you gotta make sure you got your timing. The same thing with a bigger guy, you gotta time those big shots, but it's more so you see everything coming. But you wanna stay the little man, and you don't wanna give him too much. You wanna kind of demand your space and let him know it's your ring as well. Right, um, you're a southpaw, right? Yeah. Is it difficult to get fights? Well, I know in the amateurs, did you have people that ducked you out in, in tournaments and stuff? Uh, most definitely. I don't went and dropped 20 pounds before in the tournament with a week notice and went all the way down there and they ain't want to fight. So, like, that happened a lot. But that come with being great, you know? But you just got to stay ready so they can't, can't nobody get you a slipper. Now, you come from the fight city of Philadelphia. Is there any pressure being billed as the next great light heavyweight coming out of here? Um, it depends on what you call pressure. I mean, where we from, everything is pressure. As far as I'm concerned, pressure is, you know, you got the naysayers and you got the people that believe in you. And, you know, you want to go out there and perform well. That's pressure, but, I mean, that don't bother me at all because I feel like that's what I'm built for. I know it's, that's what it's called for. You're going to be put in those type of situations. So in those type of situations, that's when your character come out and you got to show whether you're going to hold them or you're going to fold them. And we definitely not fold them on this side. So. What do you feel like is, you, is the best attribute you have or the, the, the best skill that you bring to boxing? Uh, my boxing IQ. My boxing IQ. A lot of people might say my height, my reach, my top ball. That's cool. It might be another guy taller than me. It might be South or whatever. It might be a guy that's stronger than me. Or it might be a guy that's faster than me. But as long as ain't nobody smarter than me, then that's cool. This is the number one muscle up here, right here. This. As long as you got this, this, and this, you can do whatever you want. For fans that's never seen you fight before, what's to expect? Everything. Um, what it takes to win, domination, you want to see fun, you want to see pretty much me breaking the guy down, 
I don't know what you might see because like I'm so like that that they go. I mean, I'm just so versatile. You never know. I might box somebody's socks off, or I might just take it to a guy. It just depends on what the job calls for. Right. So, there's guys who are praised about their power, right? And there's guys that are praised by their IQ. How do you disarm a puncher? You disarm a puncher by going to the body, not staying stationary. And a lot of punchers can't fight going backwards. So, sometimes you can, you can catch some guys going backwards. Um, and making those guys completely miss. When you're making guys completely miss, it takes more energy than actually landing the punch when you make a guy miss a punch. So that, that's pretty much the main keys right there. With a guy, with a guy, you can have a sledgehammer, but if you can't hit me with it, what's the use of having it? Now, I just thought about it. January 30th, that's Caleb Plant's card, right? Yes, sir. Yo, that's a big card to debut on, man. <laughs> now, any prediction for the fight? <laughs> hey, pretty much. Hey, hey, he took the words right out of, out of my mouth. The only prediction is we gonna beat some ass, like. And this is my big dog, this big bro right here. Big I'm more hungry. He gonna walk with a whole lot of ass. You gotta believe. <laughs> he, just, he just said what I was gonna say. That's how you know we so tight. He be pushing me in here. Now you're coming off of a, a very, very controversial loss in Olympic trials. Is that the reason why you turn pro? Yeah, USA boxing politics and even international politics. International politics, the last tournament we had, when we went out there to talk, determine who they were going to pick, they picked me against the home country, and I chopped him, knocked him down and everything, and they still gave him the fight. But realizing the bracket, I had two home country people in the same bracket. So after I beat that guy, from Bulgaria, the next guy I was like to fight was from Bulgaria again. So I already knew what that was about. I pretty much knew that was like the end of my gold medal chase, which was kind of like a, a heartbreaking experience for me going through that whole thing. But I just kept with the faith of God, you know, anything might happen. So I kept to stand persistent and see what happens. But it didn't turn out my way politically. So now we're on the doing what we gotta do to build the real legacy. There, um, there, come, there comes a time, I guess, in every amateur's career that they have to just make that decision to turn pro, right? Was it your your decision solely, or was it a collective team decision? It was my decision solely because I wasn't going to wait another four years to turn amateur. I'm not like one of the Cuban guys that can stay amateur. My whole thing, I'm looking at being the greatest. So with that being said, my resume got to be built. I already proved that at any level in the amateurs, I can take over and I can dominate. So basically, the next thing is proving that pro. But if you pay attention, uh, there's a lot of gold medalists, but a lot of people don't know their name because they didn't do it with that professional. So I feel like the professional is more important than the amateur thing. That whole experience let me see that. Thanks, Chief, man. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year's, everybody. Um, tune in January 30th. It's going to be a murder scene. <laughs> nah, I don't know what it might be. Man. We might have a whole lot of fun. <laughs>